Hello there, and welcome to Designing the Dark Lord of the Sith with Fantasy Flight Games Star Wars Legion. My name is Justin Boulder, and today I am joined by Simone Elliott. And over the course of the next hour, John is going to be kind enough to take us through the steps required to paint a miniature. But before we get too far ahead of yourselves, we're well aware that some of you may not know completely what Star Wars Legion is. Uh, we're going to show you the trailer for the game, and then we're going to come back and have some fun. So as you just saw, Star Wars Legion is a ground-based tabletop game in which you assume the role of a commander inside of the Star Wars galaxy and you take command of one of four armies. You can fight alongside the Galactic Empire, that's my personal favorite. You can be a member of the Rebel Alliance, you can fight with the Grand Army of the Republic, or you can fight against them as the Separatist Alliance. The ground-based game of miniatures, of course, focuses on the miniatures that you would have seen just now in the trailer, but the miniatures are not painted, and thusly that's part of the fun. If you're playing the game, you can impart your own personality upon them and make them the way that you've always wanted them to be, and if you want to keep it canon, you can do that as well. Uh, John is going to walk us through the steps required to paint the miniature, and for the rest of the hour, we're going to paint Star Wars and talk Star Wars. So I'll throw it to you, John, and uh, can you tell us the first step towards preparing your miniature to be painted? Yeah, sure. So these miniatures are supplied as, uh, as bare plastic, and um, paint does not adhere to that surface very well. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to apply a spray primer to it. And it's, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different types, but they usually come in aerosol cans, like rattle cans. And you, I, I suggest using a brand that is specifically designed for miniature painting. They're made by a lot of different miniature paint manufacturers. But you can also use uh, just kind of standard uh, flat primers that you can get from a home improvement store too. You don't have to buy something very specific. But I found that the best results are usually coming from uh, a dedicated primer for miniature painting. And you want to uh, apply a spray uh, coat over top of the miniature. Uh, you're spraying from about, oh, I don't know, 18 inches or so away from it. And you, um, I kind of set up a bit of a backdrop behind it with a cardboard box and, you know, all that sort of thing. Just so you don't have any sort of overspray or anything. So once the primer is down, though, you can start layering on the paint with various techniques in order to really let the texture of the miniature do a lot of the work for you. So, And that's really what we're going to focus on today is there's two primary techniques. One is dry brushing, in which you're using a, a brush with very little paint and you're hitting the raised areas of the miniature with a lighter color to add contrast. And the second is uh, washing or shading, in which you're using a very diluted uh, paint, somewhat similar to, say, coffee, for example. It's kind of transparent. Uh, and you're painting that over top of uh, the surface of the miniature and it seeps down into the cracks and crevices and shades it all, it, it adds shadow to it. And that's really like the fundamental part of miniature painting is contrast, the light and dark of the recesses and the raised areas together to define the overall volumes and shape of the miniature. So, so it's, it's less just straightforward painting of one of the miniatures and it's more um, applying different techniques to see more real. Yeah, 100%. I, I think that that is, you know, people look at the miniatures and see these, these tiny, uh, tiny figures and, and they're, they're thinking that, okay, well, I'll have to have amazing dexterity in order to paint all these things. But the key to it, in my experience, is you're really letting the texture of the surface do a lot of the work for you and how it's set up. So we've got uh, some examples. And, and we're focusing mostly, we're, we're all doing Sith Lords, so we're going to be focusing on painting black specifically. So here's a good example of a, a miniature that is painted largely black, but you can see the edges of all of the, uh, the straps and the, the, the webbing and, and the armor plates and things on it have these kind of like little soft edge highlights on them in a lighter color to add contrast, contrast to make all those shapes and volumes pop out. 
In stark contrast, you have like a miniature that is largely a white paint job, like this guy, for example. And that one is it largely starts off with the lightest, a lot of the shadows and shade down into the recesses in order to make those, uh, those distinctions. So um, we're going to get started off with, uh, we all are painting largely black here. So what we have done as our first step is we've chosen a color that is a very, very dark gray. And the reason that we chose that as opposed to black is that we want to use a shade to add a lot of definition to the shadows. And we want to start something with something that's a little bit lighter than black as a result. So we can see some contrast between uh, the raised and the, and the deeper areas. So the color that we used for that is this uh, one here that's called Sith Robes. It's a very dark gray. And just for the sake of expediency, we decided to base coat all these miniatures with that color first. So I'm painting Darth Maul, for example, you can see here. Um, that I've gone through and added all of this, uh, um, all of the Sith robes color to all of his uh, his tunic and his boots and everything else that's going to wind up being black. And then similarly, can I just borrow your guys' miniatures and kind of show you how these guys look? And this is uh, Emperor Palpatine, who is uh, largely in black robes, so that all that color has been added there. And then also you've got uh, Darth Vader. This is the operative version of him. We have two different versions of the miniature, and this is my mm -hmm. personal favorite. It's one I really like. So, uh, so up here a little bit. There you go. Cool. Uh, yeah, so you can kind of see that this is all just one base color, but what we really want to do is start to pull out some of that uh, detail that we have in here. And we're going to do that first by using uh, a dry brush technique. And with a dry brush technique, you're using a brush that is much larger than what you might anticipate. So, um, you know, for the sake of scale, I'm talking about a brush this big. And you're looking at this versus the miniature and be like, how are you going to possibly get any sort of detail in there? It's because what you're doing is you're using this, this brush that has pretty soft bristles and is fairly large to hit all the raised areas. So imagine that this is the detail here, like my, my raised fingers. If I brush a, a top, across the top of it, it's only going to hit these areas, but leave all of these cracks and crevices down in the recesses a darker color. So that's what we're going to start off with here today. So we're going to choose a lighter gray. In this case, we're going to use this uh, color here, Solace Stone. I'm going to mix it up really well. And uh, one, one thing that I do suggest that when you're, uh, you're painting miniatures is that you use a palette. And essentially what that is, is it, it's, a, it's a place to take the paint directly from the bottle or uh, whatever sort of container that you have and put it on um, a surface so you can load the brush properly. Because you don't want to just cram a bunch of paint on there and then glue it on the miniature. You want there to be a fairly good uh, amount of control in the amount of paint that you're applying each time. So that's, uh, that's why we use a palette. I have a, I have a version here that's got a sponge and things on it that kind of keeps my paints wetter for longer, but you can use a plate, you can use anything that you can, that's not porous essentially. So we just have plastic plates here that work just fine. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this paint and then I'm gonna pass it on to each of you guys and we can go through and get all these guys dry brushed here. It's interesting that your description really focused on, it sounded like a lot of painting was not painting so much, as much as it was drawing out the detail. Everyone knows, for instance, your mini, mm -hmm. uh, Darth Maul's face is red. Mm -hmm. While you will be painting his face red, you have other prep work that you're doing before to make sure that the red actually looks more yeah, authentic and character. Usually what I find is that you want to start off with the messiest steps first. So I find that if you want to paint your miniatures relatively quickly, and it does take a bit of time to sit down and paint one, uh, you want to start off with the things that you don't worry about if I have stray marks going onto a face or anything, or anything else, because I'm going to go back in and repaint that later. And that's why we're starting with this particular technique is because it's it's a little uh, it's a little messy honestly and because you're you're kind of like sweeping across the whole miniature and you don't have a ton of control about where that paint is going to wind up going. Mm -hmm. So uh, I like to start off with this particular technique because I think it really um, it gets it done relatively quickly and then I can go in with more careful painting and pick out all the details afterwards. Kind of helps me out quite a bit. So uh, yeah, if you guys want to take a little bit of this solace stone and put it on your palette, uh, you can see my palette down here in the camera hopefully. Yeah, so this is the, the lighter color that we have, and I'm going to load up my, my bristles on my brush. But the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a paper towel, and I'm going to take almost all of this paint off. I'm really going to, um, like, remove almost all of it, so it just leaves, like, a very kind of very light um, indication that there's any paint left on it. There's still paint on the brush, but you can't see very much of it. And then at this point, I'm going to draw it across the miniature, trying to go against the grain of any of the raised surfaces that we have here. And I'm going to start off kind of subtly first. I'm not going to jump up with a, a, a really lighter uh, color initially because I like to build it up in layers as I go. And Justin, here's a brush for you for Thank that you. purpose. No problem. 
So again, taking, you know, loading up the brush a little bit, and then I'm just going to take almost all of it off. You know, just like really take a lot of it off on the, uh, on the paper towel there. And then we're just going to kind of sweep across. So if there's a fold that's like going down in this direction, for example, I want to go perpendicular to that. I want to go against the grain whenever possible, because that will prevent the brush from going down into the recess where I want to keep the paint nice and dark. So, John, I know that during your your day job, you um, manage the mini studio. Mm -hmm. You're when you were making the minis, when the minis are being created. Yeah. Um, what kind of considerations are taken into account to make this technique work? So we're we're brushing against the grain because we want the detail to pop. Mm -hmm. um, is that considered while you're making this, and how so? Yeah, hundred percent. I, I think that we we're often looking at like the depth of the recesses that we have in a lot of cases, the shapes of those folds, and also just how smooth they are in a lot of cases. Um, we want to make sure that we. Uh, I think you'll also find like with miniatures in general that uh, when it comes to scale and details, things like hands and feet, they're often exaggerated and made a little bit larger because it just looks more natural when things are shrunk down like that, uh, which certainly helps quite a bit. And I think that you know there are certain elements of the detail that we have here that we try to accentuate to make it a little bit easier to paint as a result. Mm -hmm. So I think that, yeah, a lot of times we're, we're really looking at the surfaces. Um, we're thinking about the uh, different elements that we might include, like things like lightsabers and how close they are to the rest of the body. Because mm -hmm. there are some painters that like to paint atmospheric glows, uh, you know, and these other kind of techniques that really appeal to different people. So yeah, I think that we're, we're really considering how the miniature is going to look painted, and we try to set up all of the different elements of the miniature so it's complementary to that end. Yeah. So you're essentially using the molding of the miniatures, or excuse me, the sculpting of the miniatures to make the painting technique or process easier for the people who are buying it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, most definitely. And you're not looking at your miniature straight on. You're like looking at it as it's going to be on the table mm -hmm. instead of, you know. Yeah, yeah, that, that is definitely As I'm the case. staring at it painting. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right. Okay, so I, I've gone through very quickly and I've kind of added to that initial dry brush. And it's pretty subtle. It might be kind of hard for the camera to pick it up. So I'm going to go into a lighter color uh, after this just to add a little bit more contrast to the overall effect. And I'm going to jump up to a, a much lighter car color here. We're going to use Imperial Cargo. It's a very light gray. I'm going to shake this up a little bit. Put some of that to my palette. And you can see there on the palette just how much lighter that color is. Let's see mm -hmm. if you can see it. Yeah, this uh, this one, it's 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 a definitely very, very light gray. So I want to be kind of uh, careful with this one. You use it kind of sparingly. So I'm going to really make sure that I have hardly any of this left on my brush. And you'll notice that I didn't like really go through and, and uh, wash out this brush in between each of the, of the colors because as soon as you introduce moisture into the bristles of the brush, it's gonna kind of ruin the effect because mm -hmm. that moisture is gonna cause that paint to go down into the cracks a lot more. So you really wanna make sure that your brush is pretty bone dry uh, as you're going through on this technique. And if you're doing progressively lighter colors with the same brush, don't worry about washing it out. And are the steps the same no matter what miniature you're painting? If you're somebody who's new uh, to this, for instance. Yeah, I, I think you know the basic understanding of base coats, layering, dry brushing, washes, which we'll cover in all kind of, uh, you know, in their own right here today. Um, I think a lot of that stuff translates. Every miniature has some kind of subtle challenges that are associated with it and different colors. Uh, some colors are easier to paint than others. Yellow, for example, pretty difficult, especially if you have like a, a yellow and black kind of color scheme. It has a lot of lights and darks mm -hmm. uh, because the coverage of yellow typically is not that great. But uh, other colors like red and blue, blue they, they cover, cover a, lot, a lot better because they tend to have uh, a higher pigment count in the paints mm -hmm. in a lot of cases and it just it seems like the opacity is just uh, is just higher in those kind of paints mm -hmm. but it's going to vary and then of course shameless plug the uh, the paint sets that we sell take that into consideration and offer you a wide range of paints that should complement the miniatures yeah mm -hmm. they're, they're all kind of specifically designed for the units um, they're intended to paint so we've got uh, colors like for uh, the imperial side you've got uh, kind of light, uh, a very, very light gray for like the darkest part of a stormtrooper's armor, which is largely white. Uh, we've got a gloss varnish in there to add a shiny uh, layer to the, to the miniature afterwards. And yeah, a lot of the colors there are designed specifically for the range um, that they're associated with. So we've got like one main paint set that has a bunch of different colors in it, and then there's one for each faction that has even more paints to allow you to 
uh, address all the other different miniatures in that range. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of yellow in Star Wars, so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> There's not a ton of yellow in Star Wars that I've noticed. Well, the last time that there was a lot of yellow in Star Wars, you end up with an empire. <laughs> <laughs> Palpatine doesn't like yellow. The other thing I will say that I do like about the paint set, and to your point about they're specifically made for Star Wars, is that means that if you're using the paint set and you're using those colors for whatever miniature, it doesn't matter if you're doing a canon variation or something that's a little bit more your personality, it'll still have that authentic feel to Star Wars because it's the same. Yeah, yeah, totally. So this uh, this guy is, is now got a couple dry brushes on it and his robes are looking decidedly gray as opposed to black, but we're gonna darken those down with the shade afterwards. But what you can kind of see here is that you've got um, you know, some lights and some darks here uh, where it has really kind of picked mm -hmm. up a lot of the lights here on, on the raised areas and left a lot of that dark paint down in the recesses. And that's going to help define a lot of the forms that we have on the miniature as a first step. Yeah, I moved on to the Imperial Cargo as well in my dry brush. And it's coming out much better. So this is Simone's example. It's turning out great. You can see that all these kind of lighter folds here are, are, are a lighter color. It adds a lot of contrast and it just really accentuates a lot of the folds that you have on them. Yeah, it looks good. Well, since we're all sharing full disclosure, I'm the beginner of the group, and so this is Palpatine <laughs> with limited dry brushing brought to you by an amateur. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's coming along. I think that you want to think about uh, kind of like the top of his head and the top of his arms. Right. That's kind of where the light would hit for the most part. So, yeah, I would focus, you know, kind of think about where the light is kind of shining. You can even just use natural light as a guide to mm -hmm. kind of see where is it like really, really reflecting and when is it really bouncing. And, and that's where you can kind of concentrate a little bit more your efforts gotcha. to get a bit more contrast going on. So uh, the miniature that I have here in particular has got a, uh, it's got a base on it that has some rocks that I've glued down and that's just, you know, regular modeling sand and some rocks that I got from my, uh, from my garden. And I'm going to go through and I'm just going to base coat that, uh, that uh, ground area because it takes a little bit of time to dry. So I'll kind of show you like the base coating process essentially, unlike a dry brushing technique, we're actually going to load up the brush with a fair amount of paint. And in this case, I am uh, using um, Jedi Order Robes, which is a nice kind of reddish brown. And I'm just going to go through and just apply this base coat over top of everything. And it's going to be kind of a watery, a watery base coat over top. I got a little bit on his, on his robes. I can take that with a little bit of water. Just remove that from there. Uh, John, how long have you been painting? Oh Mini boy, uh, miniatures? Boy, a long time. Probably since I was about 12, which was a long time ago. So I'd say all told probably about 25 years. Okay. Yeah, a long time. Let's say that you're me and at the beginning of your painting journey, uh, what things should I consider or what would you consider beginner's mistakes that I should not make? Um, thinning your paints is, is a big one. And I think using a palette is, is a pretty clutch thing. I think it's... The, the big thing that people have to get their head around, not only in, in like brush control and basic techniques, is how to load up the brush properly. Because you can just grab a big old hunk of paint and just slap it right on there, but it's gonna fill in all of that detail. You have like a very finely detailed surface that you're trying to accentuate through different techniques. Mm -hmm. And you have to kind of, uh, you know, be patient with it, I think, is, is a big part of it. Because you're gonna want to expect like immediate results, but you, you might have to take one or two coats in order to get a nice flat even surface on the miniature first. So I think that it's a, that's definitely a good a good starting um, philosophy behind everything is A, just be kind of patient um, and you know just try to find like elements that you really enjoy about the overall process. It's, it's very relaxing. You just kind of sit down and focus on this uh, small object and you know uh, really kind of dial in um, some of the details that are on there. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's just kind of nice to, nice little form of escapism to just kind of like sit down and, and paint miniatures for a while. And uh, yeah, I find it to be very relaxing and enjoyable. Who would need escapism now though? <laughs> hey, this is my pandemic hobby of choice. Oh, I'm telling you, like, I'm, I'm getting a lot done right now. I went from sure. painting one or two minis to probably 25 in the last five months. That's so, pretty good. So you <laughs> started in the past five months? Um, I painted a couple of things. Um, 
November, January, and then, uh, yeah, from March forward, I paint like twice a week, and you know, this is this is how I relax. What did you find to be the hardest challenge uh, or hurdle, excuse me, to overcome when you started? Um, my own confidence that I would be bad at this. Yeah, that's that's definitely a thing. Yeah. And how long did it take you before you did both discovered that that wasn't a thing? My first, I can already see the progress like week to week. So I think if this wasn't like an intense pandemic experience, it might've taken me a lo little longer, mm -hmm. but um, I don't know, probably from like mini four or five, I was like, oh, I can do this. This is not, Yeah, yeah this definitely. is not difficult. It's Except a... for the parts that are very difficult for me. Well, yeah, I think there's, there's going to be some things, you know, in, in and throughout. I mean, it's yeah. we're, we're kind of approaching like the very kind of initial, like basic techniques yeah. that try to, in my opinion, they're they're very effective because they kind of break down some of that stigma that people have mm -hmm. about it. And they're like, oh, it's, it is about using the surface of the miniature and it's all very technique based. And I don't have to be super artistic or, or very dexterous in order to be able to do this sort of thing. Now there, I know, inevitably there will be teeny tiny little details that you'll mm -hmm. want to pick out and, uh, and try to do. And I think that, you know, what usually helps me, and it's kind of different for every person, how they, how they approach it. But what I often do is I just make sure that I have a room and then I minimize my range of motion to be the area that's the most controlled. Like that is like the last few digits of my fingers. And what I do with this hand is I will hold this miniature and I will reposition this thing mm -hmm. so that this motion is getting the line that I really want but I don't have to like move around in any sort of strange way in order to do it. You're letting the, the contours of the mini do the work for you. Orienting it with my, my left hand, because I'm right-handed, mm -hmm. uh, in order to make sure that those ranges of motion are aligned with whatever I want to try to achieve. So what often helps me is um, yeah, so elbows on the this. table and the, the kind of the palms of my hands, you know, like the very base of my hands together, hold the mini in this hand, brush in this hand. So, you know, if I was going to illustrate that with this guy here, this is a little bit different because we have this paint set up to make sure this guy's always in, in frame. But, um, you know, very similarly, you know, I would have this with my hands together and I would turn this miniature because this is the range of motion that is the most controlled mm -hmm. and the most easy to, uh, to replicate. And I would just turn this guy around. So if I wanted to pick out that eye, you know, I'd turn him sideways like this and use the tip of my brush and just kind of get in there and just hit that up. So it's, this is, you know, I'm choked way up on the brush. My fingers are, are almost to the bristles at the very end. And that just gives me the most control. But that's not always the most comfortable for everybody. So I'm kind of hesitant to like, you know, give people the silver bullet for, mm -hmm. for detail painting. That's what works for me. And it, it's gonna be a skill that you will develop over time and just figure out what's the most comfortable position for you. But mm -hmm. my suggestion would be just reposition this miniature so that this range of motion is the most controlled and the most accurate. All right, so I have applied a base coat onto uh, Darth Maul's base, and I chose this kind of rusty, uh, rusty color because he's going to be going in an army that has this type theme, so it's mm -hmm. that kind of like Marsy kind of mm -hmm. rusty color. So this is a great uh, color to start off with. And while that dries, I'm going to go ahead and apply a base coat onto his skin. And his skin is a bright red, and then he has these uh, black markings on it. And what's cool about this particular miniature is that there's a very kind of like faintly etched line for all of those markings on the face. But you want to, again, apply a very thin base coat so you make sure you don't fill in that detail. Use a wash over top of it to be able to kind of accentuate some of that with a dark color that'll serve as a roadmap for me to, to mm -hmm. paint in all those markings later. It will take you know a bit of time in order to get that kind of detail achieved, and I think that's kind of out of the scope of what we're doing today. Mm -hmm. But I want to kind of show you how I just start off that process in general. This is a great opportunity for me to take a break because I got no skin. <laughs> You have zero skin on that <laughs> fellow, yeah. yeah. But, but you can do whatever you want with him, so you don't have to paint him black. That's true. You could paint him however you want to, but you will could. you feel conflicted if you don't paint I him will, black? Uh, yeah. I will feel a little conflicted, yep. so yep. he's going to stay. You're not alone. You're not alone on he's that He's going to stay. Well, what you can do is you can start to base coat his lightsaber. <gasps> I can. We are all using the same kind of basic colors for, for uh, so lightsaberage. And we're going to start off with a dark red first, so I think it's a Royal Guard Crimson. Yeah, Make sure to shake that fellow up really well. Yes, it is. He's going to have to, to go on there pretty well. So I'm going to uh, base out his uh, skin with this much brighter red, which is called <laughs> Blaster Bolt Red. And I'm choosing that because I'm going to put a wash down over top of it, and it's mm -hmm. going to become a lot darker. Mm. For you, you've got a flesh color of Palpatine, and he's kind of a pallid, 
sickly indoors type, I yeah. suppose, if you want to call them that. So we, we have a, a color here called Junlin Wastes, which I think is, is nice and kind of a nice pale skin tone. And that'll be a little bit lighter from what you actually want it to wind up at the end, but it's going to be a great base coat for you. So right. shake that up and go ahead and paint his hands and his face as well as you can. And then we can always go back in and touch up if you go outside the lines a little bit. Um, I had forgotten that was what we named that color and it just brings me such joy. <laughs> Anytime you can have like a deep cut in your paint color. Yeah, is, yeah, I'm with you. It's pretty great. This color is not to be taken lightly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also glad that I learned the technique of making the model work for you. Because now I can hold my Palpatine Mini and I will not be trying to get all inside the... Oh, totally. Here you go. Here's a pen. Oh, There's that was thing. not shaken enough. Yeah, yeah, you got to make sure to shake these guys up. These paints have kind of been sitting here for a little while, so you, you want to make sure to shake them up. I guess one thing to talk about a little bit is paint is made up of, you know, mostly three different things. You've got medium, you've got pigment binder, you've got pigment. And as they sit on the shelf, those paints will kind of separate a little bit, and sometimes you won't get a nice opaque uh, coverage that you would like. You know what? You told me I could paint whatever I want, so pink lightsaber is the way to go. That seems good. <laughs> You're I still like scared it. of Darth Vader, though, because you won't paint him a different color. You're just going to do the lightsaber. <laughs> Look, I have to answer to people who take light, uh, Darth Vader very seriously. You're scared. That's okay. I'm just, I, you're right. I am scared of Sherry. I am. <laughs> you should be. She's a tyrant. <laughs> That's not true. She's the nicest person ever. <laughs> it's true. It's only because she's watching at home. Yeah, I know. I had to backtrack to make sure she doesn't get me later. <laughs> Joke's on you. She's not watching this. Oh, man. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to go ahead and base coat all of Darth Maul's head with this very bright red, which is going to look out, a little out of place right now, but it will look better later, I promise. That was a big learning curve in painting miniatures. What's that, that it will look better later. Yeah, yeah. Accepting that it's just going to look better later. Yep, There's 100%. A point where it's not going to look good, and that's okay. Do you have a particular favorite that you've painted possibly multiple times, John? Hmm. That's a good question. I really like... Uh the scout troopers that I've done. And I guess that's kind of like painting the same guy over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, scout troopers are my favorite uh, out of all the Imperial units. Um, the Battle for Endor is like one of my favorite things ever. And uh, I've got a lot of scout miniatures in my army because I've got speeder bikes, I've got um, a sniper team, I've got um, just basic units with like saboteurs in there. Like there's a lot of cool tactical stuff you can do with them. And it's cool because it all kind of comes together and makes a, a neat themed army kind of mm -hmm. based around like, oh, these guys are all about reconnaissance and scouting mm -hmm. and, you know, fast movement and all that sort of thing. And, and that, that really appeals to me when I can, you know, pick and choose the units available, which there are a lot in, in Legion, and kind of apply you know, a little bit of kind of real world purpose to it, I suppose. Mm -hmm. You know, like what, what would these guys be doing? What would they be focused on? And that's really interesting to me when it comes to uh, to collecting and painting an army. That's one of the best parts of Star Wars, though, is just kind of speculating on the things that you see in the background or wondering where, oh, yeah. where else in the galaxy mm -hmm. are these guys used and how are they used differently. Yeah. But you can impart that onto them when you're painting, as you just said. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. I have a bunch of dewbacks to paint. Ooh, nice. And that's going to be like a winter project. It's yeah. just a collection of dewbacks. Totally. I painted mine like a Gila monster from the... <laughs> From the southwest, those nice. kind of poisonous lizards with like the magenta uh -huh. and black markings uh -huh. on them. Oh yeah. Yeah, I just thought it looked cool. I was like, oh, this would be kind of fun. It's a crazy lizard thing. There's an action figure from a line that I'm not going to mention, just in case it'll get us in trouble for copyright reasons. Um, but once upon a time, he was painted as a Gila monster and had a very cool feature where you would hit a switch on his back and he'd add a forked tongue that would come in and out. Oh really? Mm. Yeah. And now I kind of want to paint a dewback that color, which was he was purplish and yellow and green and black. I have Jedi robes back because yeah. I definitely got red all over his helmet. That oh, is... no, you need Sith robes. A oh, Sith robe, sorry. There's so many robes. There's so many robe colors. You should just go with it. No, I'm not. I'm not. He has put his Jedi pass behind him. Well, technically, then he reclaimed it, so. But not right now. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 
Um, another aspect I like a lot about the game, and it, it definitely factors into the painting, is many of the miniatures that we sell come with uh, alternate ways that you can assemble them so that they all don't necessarily have to look the same. Yeah, yeah, definitely, especially some of the more recent guys. Like, we've uh, got multiple poses for, say, Aiden Bursio mm -hmm. or uh, Cassian Andor. Mm -hmm. Cad Bane. Cad Bane, <laughs> yeah. Cad Bane's got some options. Definitely very cool. Which options did you do? I see you have Cad You gotta go here. Gunfighter, right? Like you got it, it. The option is either Gunfighter or like him pushing the detonation button. That's and I just, fun. he's no. just so Wild West to me. Like I, I gotta, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I gotta do the Gunfighter pose. That's That's gotta be the option for me. Okay, so I have base coated Darth Maul's skin. You'll notice that the coverage here is not, uh, not not ideal yet, and I rather than just me heaping on more paint, I'm just going to let that dry, and then I'm going to apply a different coat on it afterwards. So one thing that you also have to kind of typically juggle a little bit is drying times when it comes to your different layers. So that's why I kind of like to skip around in different areas, like um, your base coats and your washes are going to take a little bit of time to dry. It's going to take you know, 15, 20 minutes, mm -hmm. and especially when you're doing a kind of a tutorial and trying to show people in a, a very kind of uh, quick and efficient way, some of that stuff isn't going to work out the best for you. So while I'm uh, going and, and doing this part, I'm going to go ahead and base coat the, this lightsaber with uh, the same color, which is going to be a little bit lighter than what I want it to uh, look like in the end. But I'm going to go ahead and just use this while I have the paint available. I know it's, I'm going to use this later. And John, about how long, if, if I was determined to sit down with the mini and paint it fully, around, uh -huh. how long would you, um, around how long would you think it would take me to do that as a beginner? As a beginner, first miniature? Mm -hmm. I would say a couple hours, probably. It'd probably take you a little bit of time to kind of get the, get your head around some of it. Mm -hmm. But they're painting units. For example, you can do a thing called batch painting, and that's essentially just like painting all of a given step while you have that paint out, mm -hmm. and while you're dealing with things like dry time, for example. Like mm -hmm. when you go down and you paint this first step on miniature number one, as you go through two, three, four, and five, by the time you get back to number one, that paint is going to be dry. So it's it's kind of like this assembly line of, of, mm -hmm. of what mm -hmm. you're doing as you're going through and painting. And I think that really helps out quite a bit. I mean, it's um, I know quite a few people that will just kind of sit down over the course of a weekend and they can get a whole army painted in, in a weekend. It also depends on, you know, how um, how much time you want to, you know, invest in the miniatures. Mm -hmm. You know, high-end competition painters will spend tons and tons of time, mm -hmm. you know, like 20, 30 hours on a single guy wow. in order to get everything just right. But you should never feel like that's what you have to do in order to participate in the game. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's all about kind of how far you want to take it personally and, like, and what you really enjoy about the overall painting experience and just uh, what you're really happy with. I mean, it's you take it as far as you want to and don't let other people and the examples you see online really influence your ideas as far as like what's good. The most important thing is something that you're proud of and, and that you learn some techniques along the way. And that's another good point. You don't have to actually paint these in order to enjoy the game. No, no, not at all. Mm -mm. And you don't have to enjoy the game in order to paint them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, conversely, yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Um, I, I know quite a few people that, you know, that's kind of all they do is they just paint miniatures and they're not really interested in playing the game so much or doing anything along those lines. They just, they enjoy the act mm -hmm. of painting and it's, uh, mm -hmm. I, I can see why because it's uh, just very relaxing. It's kind of a creative endeavor. You can mm -hmm. do variations on a paint scheme and be really creative with it. Or you can just create something that, you know, is very recognizable uh, mm -hmm. as you saw it on screen or in uh, comics, etc. And now in a time where maybe you can't play games with your friends, you can sit sit and do this though. Yeah, big time. In preparation for a day that one day the restrictions are lifted and we can all uh, get together and enjoy some miniatures games again. I am looking forward to those days. Big time. Good excuse to hang out over Zoom or Skype or another. Yeah, I do that every week. I'm, I'm hanging out with, uh, yeah. with a solid posse of good friends every week and we're just uh, shooting the breeze. Man, that's a show title. Do you watch Solid Posse of Good Friends? I do. <laughs> uh, uh.
<laughs> Copyright. Yeah. We, we got to get that in before somebody else steals it. I mean, we could just we could register that domain right after this. Yeah. Like, well, I think we better. <laughs> at least one person right now is doing that already. Solid so posse of yeah. good friends. They're like, oh man, I can. I hope it's one of our friends watching us. They should they should invite John Schaefer on. And <laughs> and his solid posse. <laughs> and my solid That's posse. That's the first episode right there. Solid there posse of good friends. Let's do it. I like you're just alternating between your solid posse. What are you looking for? Uh, I'm looking for a white. Let's see if I have it. A white handy. I don't necessarily need it 100%, but it could be handy uh, for a later purpose. No later purposes for you. No, we have a lot of gray. Yeah, that's fine. No problem. I'll use this off white. Okay. It's a lot lighter. But I'm essentially going to uh, just add in a little bit of a little bit of a lighter color towards the base, like where the, the light would start to shine out from the uh, lightsaber. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, right. Mm. So I'm going to do that by, and this is, you know, Something that kind of skews some people out. I'm just actually going to mix <laughs> paints together. People are like, oh, this is not the, you know, the intended oh, way. Oh, that's the best part. It's, it's the best part of it. There yeah. are people judging you right now. Yeah, they're like, oh, what is he doing? He's crossing the streams. Oh, why would you do Expert. that? All right, so I'm going to go through and mix together these two colors to get kind of like a nice uh, kind of lighter red. Something a little bit more saturated poorly here. Poorly mixed pink. You can also do that. <laughs> And then starting out at the base here, I'm going to add some of that lighter color. And then while that paint is still wet, I'm going to go back in with some straight white again. We'll just kind of blend that in there just a little bit. This is a little bit more of an advanced technique, just using actual blending while the, the paint is still wet. But I figure I'd, I'd just kind of show you how it can be done relatively quickly without too much work. And a lot of it is just through kind of a, a feathering motion where you kind of apply the first color here, pull the paint out a little bit, take some of the excess paint off, and then just kind of feather the color in just through some kind of repeated strokes. Oh, do you not have a lightsaber? Poor Justin. No. Yeah. I'm like, I'm <laughs> what's like some people who are here? sitting around oh, the table. Oh, you have flesh, and I I'm, have a lightsaber. I am just going to paint his cane red. Mm. Would you like some red? Would you, would you like to stripe it too? Or? Would you like some Royal Guard maybe, Crimson? I, you know, maybe I do. Maybe this is a, uh, a holiday Palpatine. Because <laughs> he's totally the kind of character who would love the holidays. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Gather around. <laughs> okay. So I've got a little bit of a, a quick, quick effect here on the lightsaber. Simone, if you are interested in doing this, I can kind of help you through it. But it looks like you're on your own path of pink lightsaber. I'm. I mean, it's mostly red. Yeah. But I'm getting that pink in there. It's great. Okay. All right, well, I think now is probably a good time to start to introduce some washes on this fellow. Oh, I'm ready. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of this. This is shadow wash. You can tell because it's got a red cap that it's actually a wash paint. And how are we doing on time right now? 20 minutes. Got about 20 minutes? Okay, cool. That sounds about right. So I'm going to put a little bit of this on the palette, and I'm going to show uh, you guys a little bit how, how this looks. So it is very, very, very thin. And let's see if we can kind of bring this into the palette here. So this is the dot that I'm talking about right here. And you can see that this is, um, as you kind of spread it out, it is kind of like coffee. It is kind of transparent and very thin and very watery. And we're going to use that to uh, kind of paint over top of the miniature and, and really kind of focus on some of the cracks and crevices that we have first. So we're going to paint these in into kind of the recesses and then pull it away from the raised areas to add kind of shadow and definition. Pull it towards you, John. No, oh, here we go. There we go, let's get framed up again here. There we go. It's interesting to me how much of this is essentially cheating. You, oh, yeah, You big take time. a look at one of our packages and you think, oh, I can just, you know, go ahead and paint that however I want to. And while that's true, it doesn't really take a lot of experimentation in, in figuring out how the paint um, works, for lack of a better word, mm -hmm. to make it do more for you based on how the miniature was put together. Yeah, definitely. And he's, you know, I, I think that miniatures painters are very fortunate these days because there are a lot of very talented people out there 
with very involved and very detailed tutorials that can mm -hmm. share every little subtle nuance of miniature painting with people. And it's um, there's just so many great resources now online to be able to uh, figure out, you know, how to proceed with this with this hobby and how to kind of develop your skills and, and challenge yourself. And uh, that's something that I, I wish that I had when I was first getting involved with this because it's, I felt like there was just so many so many instances of just me not understanding the basic um, principles of miniature painting and just mm -hmm. kind of making a lot of assumptions. Mm -hmm. And it only kind of really came to light, you know, through repetition and just these kind of aha moments that were largely self-taught. So yeah, you kids are fortunate these days. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, lots of resources available to you. No excuse not to paint great miniatures. Old man Schaefer. <laughs> Old man Schaefer. Stay off my lawn. Keep painting minis. How about you, Simone? Any one that you've painted in your journey in the last six months that you uh, are particularly fond of? Huh. Um, I have a Palpatine that I really love. The purple one? <laughs> it's because I painted yes. Justin was with us when I painted him. Um, he's purple. He's got a gold cane. I definitely did some stuff on his brooch. Oh. He is. Talk to me about this brooch. <laughs> you know, he's a classy dude. He this is. is. He is a classy dude. Th this is maybe what he should have worn to the opera. It's a little more fancy. <laughs> you know. Got to be a man of the people. We were at war at the time, so, you know, maybe that wasn't the right thing. In a time of peace, it would have been a more yeah, appropriate... Uh, understandable. ...as a senator. Maybe too ostentatious for a senator, but he's from Naboo, so... I like that that's the one that you picked. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm upset that I didn't think to say, can you bring that Palpatine with you? Oh, so I know. You can show it to everyone right Oh, now. he's somewhere in this building, packed up very safely. <laughs> Just waiting for his time to strike from the oh, shadows. Oh, he is. With his gold cane. And his gold he cane. is impressive. I am very excited by him. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, he, I mean, he doesn't really match with this Vader who's got no gold. No purple. Well, you could change that. I mean, you're completely in control. It's true. We, oh, believe me, he'll end up with something gold. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I have applied a wash over top of all of the Sith robes on Darth Maul here, and you can really start to see a lot of that contrast popping out, all of these little folds and all these little details. And at this point, that does like kind of the lion's share of the work for this these sections of the miniature. Um, and it gets a lot of. Uh, you know, the uh, the definition and specifics kind of finished. I think at this point, if I was going to take it further, I would go back in with a lighter color and tidy up some of these highlights with a lighter color. And we'll see if we uh, we get enough time to actually go through and apply some of that with the, the dry time that we have. So I'm going to apply the, the shade to his face now. Mm. And when I do this, I want to thin this down a little bit because I don't want it to quite tint everything quite so dark. I really want it to just kind of fall into the cracks as best as possible. Uh, so I'm going to mix just a little bit of water by just dipping my brush into some water. going to come down here, kind of pick it up. Let me see if you can see my palette here. Uh, and just pick up some of this paint by just kind of thinning it down just a little bit. And then I'm going to pull the shade into the recessed areas as best as I possibly can. So that's going to include his eye sockets. Oh, yeah. Underneath his nose, around these little horns. I want a little bit of shadow there into his ear. All these little nooks and crannies on his face. Find something humorous about Darth Maul's ears. <laughs> I just okay. So when we were doing the sculpting for Darth Maul, mm -hmm. um, we were looking at all the stuff on his head, and I still have that brick that has his three heads mounted yeah, on I it. Yeah, I remember I had to like paint a, a test <laughs> for, for Lucasfilm to take a look is, at it. He is in my desk drawer, and every so often I just take him out and go like, look at my little mall heads. You just your little, mm -hmm. your little trifecta mall heads. Mm -hmm. We should modify them to be kind of like a hear no evil, see no evil <laughs> yes. kind of situation. Yep. Mm -hmm. We'll just make some little hands and put them on mm -hmm. his face and stuff. Cool, so I've applied kind of a thin layer of, uh, of the shade over top of the red skin, and this is kind of picking out a lot of those details, and you can see some of the little channels here have been accentuated uh, on his face markings, just ever so slightly. Let's see if I can kind of get a good angle here where you can see it. And to clarify, that is the reason that those markings exist um, in the way that they do on this uh, miniature, is so that when people are painting him, it really does come. Yeah, out. exactly. We, we wanted to make it just a little bit simpler because it's you know they're pretty complex. There's a lot going on there, uh, and when you're painting them at scale. It's a little challenging, so this this will hopefully make the uh, the journey a little bit easier for people. I 
And they did such a great job on the light too. It really looks mm -hmm. like him. It's awesome. Yeah. I am super excited to get him and paint him. Are you going to do some unconventional color scheme or are you going to keep it, keep it classic? <sighs> I think he needs a different color outfit. I think that's yeah. what he deserves. And what kind of outfit would you uh, would you paint for Darth Maul? Let me guess. Tell the folks at home. <laughs> it's got to be purple, right? <laughs> it seems like that's I, okay, the go-to. So I'm maybe well known for adding purple to places where purple maybe canonically but, but you've does grown, not belong. You've grown so much. I have grown so much days. as a painter since those in those days. <laughs> Good. That was in February, guys. I'm a whole different person. That's true. Yeah, you got. <laughs> we a lot, all are now. You got a lot of quarantine time in there to get your practice on. Yeah, I feel you. <laughs> All right, I'm just brightening up this lightsaber a little bit. And I'm kind of painting over some of the transition between the lighter and the darker color that I had there, just kind of smooth it out a little bit. It's just a little bit of... Got it, got it. Cool, cool. All good. right. So let's let's check progress. So people have been staring at Darth Maul a little oh, bit. God, let's, yeah. let's, see, let's see how you yeah. guys have been doing. So before I hand this to you to show it yep. to you, whoever is watching, yep. um, you know what? Let's just go with it, and I can explain myself if I need to. Okay. All right. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Hey, hey. I was not prepared. I was not ready for that See, little, little splash of red. Now I want to like add some. Unlike, I like it. Unlike some people. Off frame, John. I like it. I like I like that red in there. Um, I feel the need to apologize for his condition. Uh, like I said, I am a beginner at this, mm -hmm. so I'm sharing because I'm sure that there are beginners watching who are going to be at my level who would need to feel encouraged right now that they can still do this. Yeah, for sure. So I think that, you know, the one thing that's really going to help out this paint job quite a bit is that shade when you're going through and applying that because it's really going to help define a lot of the shadows and the recesses here. Mm -hmm. I think you have a good, nice, solid base coat on the hands and the face. And I think that, you know, once that paint dries just a little bit more, you'll probably be able to apply a shade. Now, my recommendation, though, for the, the hands and the face as opposed to using black, which is really going to make it um, kind of skewed, in a weird he, color. He does look like he got beat up. <laughs> it's true. Uh, I think it will probably use a, a brown wash over top of it. Okay. Mm. And that, uh, let me grab that one for you. Oh, yeah, no, I want to, I would like to see. Yes, the please. As we, please. Okay. And let's, let's show the people, uh, old, old Vader, and see how Simone is doing. Yeah, Simone is looking great. Yeah, Simone, you're a show off. I, he's, uh, he's very basic. I, I make like miniatures his... once a week. Every uh, week. His cape is very cape like. That's really all he's got going on. Yeah, he's, he's it's a lot of black. So it's, uh, <laughs> Yeah, a dry brush over top and an ink wash, and Vader is like largely done. You have some buttons to pick out, um, a couple little details to do. I want to use this plastoid gloss varnish because he needs a shiny helmet. Yeah, you do. All right, cool, cool. Uh, and that is, uh, it's essentially just a, a transparent paint that mm -hmm. you can apply over top. And it's great for uh, stormtrooper armor mm -hmm. or anything you want to make glossy, like any sort of lenses or like goggles or anything like that. It's uh, certainly effective. All right, so while these uh, these washes are drying over top of here, I'm going to go th through and, uh, and dry brush up his base by uh, using a, a lighter color. In this case, I'm going to use the appropriately named Geonosian Soil, mm. which is a nice kind of burnt orange. And then, Justin, for you, you'll want this strong tone wash, which is a brownish color as opposed mm -hmm. to the black. So you can paint that over top of the skin and then mm -hmm. paint the black wash, which is called shadow wash, mm -hmm. over top of all the ropes. And I think that is probably your next step right now. It's gonna take a little while to dry. Mm -hmm. And it's probably a good good note to kind of end and mm -hmm. kind of wrap up on is, um, because otherwise we'd kind of be just literally be sitting here watching paint dry. So <laughs> I think it is a, a good one to wrap up on. And as I mentioned before, there are so many resources. If you are interested and want to learn more about painting miniatures, there are tons of different uh, places that you can find information online. If you just did some searches for painting miniatures for beginners, you can get a lot of tips, a lot of uh, a lot of tricks. There are paint guides on fantasyflightgames.com. Yeah, 100%. Yep, yeah, we also have those. The, we have a number of uh, different PDFs that use these specific colors that go through uh, the painting of the core sets, and we have some more of those planned in the future. So, yeah, also another good place to take a look. Mm -hmm. And then I think that we have, you know, plans to do a number of other uh, live streams on our uh, FFG Live mm -hmm. channel in the future. So we will continue to be sharing uh, painting insights and showing off these cool miniatures. Not mine. All right, so I'm going back to that same dry brushing technique. 
with this kind of lighter, lighter orangish color to pick out all those rocks. And some people will be like, oh man, I have to paint each one of these grains of sand. I know you don't. You just, <laughs> you just dry brush over top and it picks out all of that stuff for you. I can't let the moment pass without saying that I recognize the opportunity for a good sand joke. I'm just not going to make it. Nice. I'm so proud of you. You're welcome. Yeah, man. You've grown so much. I have. I'm a mature adult now. <laughs> You're doing it. Painting your little man. Painting those little okay. mans. I, I recognize that that was a thinly veiled insult to my favorite character. <laughs> and I didn't appreciate that. I don't know if it was that thinly veiled. Yeah. Seems pretty on the nose. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to jump up to one more lighter color just for the sake of a little bit more contrast. How exciting. I know. How it's riveting. <laughs> and we've got, uh, we've got Dune Sea, which is the next oh. one. It's kind of an ochre color, kind of a nice tan action right here. And that's got a lot of contrast in it. So again, I'm going to be kind of light with my touch here how I apply this stuff and I really just want to kind of lightly skim over top of this sand to kind of pick out those those details as well as I can. But it's just whisking over top of the you know those raised spots mm -hmm. and it's uh dry brushing is a technique that is super easy and gets really fast results. However, the, the technique and how you apply it sometimes leaves the surface a little bumpy. So that is kind of the reason why not everybody uses this technique all the time. It's Imagine. a little unpredictable in order uh, as far as uh, some of the detail goes, but that's... Imagine muscle memory helps too. Once oh, you big start time. Doing it, you, yeah, you just, just learn, you just develop that pressure. Yeah. And that's kind of a tricky thing for people to kind of get their head around the first time is just the amount of pressure they need to apply when they're doing this particular technique. And it's so light, like I'm just barely bending those bristles. If you can kind of see those bristles there, I'm just, that's about as much as they're really bending mm -hmm. as I kind of whisk over to the, to the top of this guy. All right, so that's the base pretty much finished. If I wanted to, I could pick out these rocks in a different color, just for the sake of contrast, but I kind of like this uniform look of the base and the rocks around it. So that's looking pretty good to me. And I think just, uh, you know, with the remaining time that we have left here, I'm gonna uh, share a little bit about um, layering and highlighting. So in this case, you're taking uh, a paintbrush with a good tip, something very similar to this and focusing on the raised areas first, and I have to be kind of careful because I still have some wash in here that's, uh, that's still wet. So I'm gonna choose an area here up on his shoulder where it's dry. And I can just paint in some little highlights. And you'll notice that I've kind of like braced my hand against, I mean, because I, I, I can't do this right now because of this thing, I'm kind of bracing uh, the pinky of my hand here against the cup, which is just giving me a little bit of a stable platform. And then I've got my fingers kind of choked way up towards the very tip of the brush. And I'm turning this guy to kind of match what is a comfortable motion for me. And I'm really just kind of focusing on, you know, the raised areas of the folds. And I'm thinking about it in terms of where the light is coming. So on top of these shoulders, these are gonna be a little bit lighter. And on the top of these folds down here, I'll be careful to kind of dodge around that wash as much as I can. So normally I would wait until this was totally dry, but mm -hmm. we're, we're speeding through this. Thanks. And one thing that can also help with this, this technique is rather than going straight in on that fold, what you can do is you can kind of turn your brush to the side a little bit. And if you do that, you're using the side of the brush and that's only gonna hit that raised area. When, like if you're imagining you know, this is, this is your raised spot of your fold on, on your cloth. As opposed to going in here and painting this down like this directly, mm -hmm. I'm going at it and going to hit it sideways, which means that the brush is only really going to hit that raised part, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of going at it um, with, in a different direction, I suppose. So I'm just going to kind of like lightly whisk over top of these folds to give me just a little bit more contrast make these colors pop just a little bit more. I 
on the knuckles of his hands here. It's a good spot to kind of pick those things out. And this cloak, I'm just going to pick out just a couple of these. Some nice little fine lines. And that's, this is kind of like the stage in the painting where you're going back and you're fixing your mistakes. Mm -hmm. Like we've done all the messy stuff. We did the, the washes, we did the dry brushing. We kind of like went all over the place and weren't too concerned with precision and specifics about like, you know, what areas need to be different colors. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of that touch up stage where you go back in with darker colors and you try to tidy up the overall paint job as well mm -hmm. as you possibly can. Okay, you made, guys made so much fun of me that he was so black, so now I've added some blue. I don't, so I don't see it. Look, he's got like an anime action hair cape now. Oh, is that what he had? Oh. Yeah, exactly. I like that. <laughs> All right. Questions about miniature painting? Something that you think is like beyond your skill or something that you're trying to learn and develop right now? In watching you and hearing you <laughs> um, and you going through the different techniques, the thing I kept thinking of in my head, and I, I said this a few times, is it's really about making the miniature work for you. Yes. And you did a great job of explaining that there's a discovery process behind all this which leads to the calm that we were talking about where it's not just letting the mini do the work for you but you have to find where that's actually possible you mm -hmm. mentioned a minute ago that you were looking at the knuckles on his hands mm -hmm. that's not something i would have thought of as somebody who doesn't paint all the time um it it really does sound like doing this will kind of force you no pun intended to center yourself on the mini mm -hmm. and how you can make it look the yeah, it and, and it's, you know, a, a big part of it is just practice, you know, just sitting down and becoming more comfortable. It's like any sort of skill. Mm -hmm. The more time you dedicate to it, the more that you learn and the more uh, of your own personal insight you're going to interject into it, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're, you're going to be like, oh, well, this is really comfortable for me. This is a technique that works great for me. Um, you know, it, and this is something that I get um, good results out of with, uh, without really stressing myself out too much. Yeah. But I think that there are some basic fundamentals and principles um, that are consistent across all miniatures too, for mm -hmm. sure. All right, well that's where I got in about an hour on Darth Maul, spending some time talking about things. Not a bad, a bad stopping point on him. I think if I was gonna take him further, I would be looking at picking out uh, some of the miniature uh, details here, some, some of the details on his lightsaber in particular, obviously the facial markings that he has. So we'll just put him here in this little spotlight area so you can kind of see the progress thus far. I'll move these other guys out of the way so you can see them pretty well. And then I'll kind of spin him around. You can see a little bit of an indication there on the lightsaber of a light to kind of dark progression. Um, I would probably, you know, add a little bit more time and care to that overall mm -hmm. transition because I think it's like a real defining area of him. And then obviously, you know, I have all of those facial markings to go through and, and mm -hmm. pick out. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at your guys and see how they turned out. Yeah, let's do that. Let's start with Simone. We're going to start with, with Simone. Simone. I'm just showing the back of his fine take, If you want to take three minutes to go over Simone, <laughs> <thank you. Fine. laughs> All right, Simone has done a great job of picking out all this black. I like the fact that uh, you went and added a little bit more of a cool mm -hmm. tone to that color. It kind of makes the cape pop out, and that's something that you know I uh, often think about when it comes to like largely black schemes. Mm -hmm. Is um, I like to pick out different elements that are different materials. I did it uh, kind of subtly here. You can't really tell very well, but uh, the gun, for example, has more of a bluish black on the highlights. Uh, that's kind of carried through, and then you, you've done a great job on the lightsaber as well. Okay. All, right. All right, and to wrap it up, Palpatine. Yay! Here we go. Got him here. He's kind of stressed. You're, la you're laughing like you're not happy with it. I'm not completely happy with him, but that's okay because, as you said, um, it's about going back and finding how mm -hmm. you want to uh, enhance what you've done already and that it does take time. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I, I like to keep the miniatures that I had like, in the state that they were as opposed to going back and touching them up a lot because mm -hmm. it's, a, mm -hmm. it's a snapshot of my skill and my ability at that time. Mm -hmm. And it triggers some memories. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. And uh, you know, oftentimes, rather than going back and revisiting old paint jobs, I'll paint something new. Yeah. Well, uh, 
thank you everyone for joining us for painting star wars minis we hope that you've enjoyed it and you should definitely check us out at fantasyflightgames.com where you can click on star wars legion and find all of the products that you see here and the painting tutorials that we were speaking of earlier mm -hmm. so for mm -hmm. simone john and myself uh thanks again for watching and have a great evening